Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for uh, joining us this evening. I'm Regine from the Nanyang Business School. And here with me uh, from the Nanyang Business School is my colleague, Li Shan. Li Shan, would Hi, you like everyone. to meet me? Hi. Yeah. And uh, here with me today are four students from our Masters of Science in Accountancy program. Uh, we are really very happy to have them uh, join us this uh, evening to share their experience uh, in the program. And um, I think uh, it is a very, um, I, I think it's a very timely uh, for them to share their experience because they just uh, finished their trimester one. Uh, and they are now in their trimester too. So I think that's something that uh, you know they can share, and they can also share their uh, you know application experience uh, where many of you could be at the stage right now. How was it uh, like uh, when they were applying to the program? The experience during the admission interview, etc. So uh, so how the session will go uh, today will be uh, I'll ask each of the uh, student to give a short introduction of themselves. And then uh, we will have some questions uh, prepared for them. They will you know, share their experience and insights. And before we end off uh, tonight's uh, session, it will be a question and answer question uh, session where uh, you know, our students uh, will do their best to answer all the questions that you may have. Yeah, so throughout this whole session, feel free to type in your uh, question into the chat box that you see over there and we'll get to them at the end of the session. So uh, Lishan will facilitate the introduction part. Lishan, over to you. Yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming again. OK, so uh, so Siran, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah. OK, uh, I start. So hello, everyone. My name is Fan Siran, so you can call me Victoria. Mm -hmm. I graduated from the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia with a Bachelor of Commerce degree in accounting and marketing double major. So the reason why I want to join this program is uh, the first reason is definitely for the reputation and the ranking of the uh, program and the university. And the second reason is for its well-designed course curriculum structure. So we have 15, 15 courses in one year and uh, some of the courses uh, are already covered by my bachelor degree but these courses can help me to strengthen my existing knowledge and there are also other courses which are not covered by my bachelor degree for example uh, the accounting information system and also the data analytics and machine learning for accounting some courses like that so these new courses can broaden my knowledge so i uh, I like this course curriculum structure very much. And the third reason is that uh, th I think this program just matches with my future career path. I, I wish that I can be a finance and accounting practitioner. So this program is quite matching. So that's all for my self introduction. Thank you. Oh, so thank you, Sura. And thank you for sharing your short introductory. Uh, as you can see, Suran uh, comes uh, from a university in Australia, and then she saw something very impactful that we offer. And we believe that you will also feel the impact when you join us. Okay, so uh, next up, uh, can William introduce himself, please? Uh, yes, hi. Uh, thank you, Lishan. Hi, my name is uh, William, and most recently, I was a senior relationship manager with uh, Hamburg Commercial Bank. My undergraduate degree was in business, and this is actually my second master's NTU. Yes, I like NTU that much. I chose the master's in accountancy, <laughs> you know, with Nanyang Business School because of the quality of the brand name, uh, which is very important for me, and also the alumni network. I think uh, once you get into the working world, uh, the network is very important, and also the robust uh, program structure. No. Oh. Okay, that's a really very brief, William, but very insightful. Yes, okay, so thank you, William. Okay, so next up, Debashi, would you like to introduce yourself too? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Lishan. Uh, hello, all. Uh, I am Debashi. Uh, so you can call me Deb. Uh, I was actually working at EY before joining NTU. I was working as a tax senior. Uh, I did my MBA uh, around eight years back from University of Calcutta. Uh, I joined uh, NTU primarily because of two reasons. First, uh, the first reason was the brand name, definitely the ranking of NTU 
and MBS is, uh, is it's ranked among the top universities in the world. So that mattered to me a lot. And the second reason was I was looking for a course uh, wherein I can, uh, you know, uh, a course which can help me leverage analytics in the field of accounting. And if we look at the course structure at uh, NBS MSc Accountancy, we have modules on uh, data analytics, which was uh, which was an uh, important factor for me to decide to join this course. Uh, yeah, that's all about me. Uh, uh, okay, thank you, yeah. Debashish. Yeah, so Debashish actually saw that we uh, offer uh, data analytics, so he decided to tap on this. So this is what actually our accountancy can offer to you too. Okay, so hi, Lika. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so hello, everyone. My name is Lika, and you can call me Tom. That before joining the NTU, I worked three years in the assurance service line in PFC. I chose NTU because first, like others said, it's brand name, and also it's very necessary for me to have a master degree. And also, I think after working some years, you continue a master degree will be really helpful because maybe my bachelor degree is also in accountancy, but maybe sometimes just you learning from the book, you may not understand what you learn. And maybe after some experience, I can learn more about what I have learned and maybe to know how to practical use them in the real business life. And also, let's say that maybe there's some uh, labs in the, what I've learned in the University of in Macau when I was in bachelor degree based what I've learned in NTU. But still there will have some new insight provided that I can have some new thoughts about accounting and also the related data. So I think that's really helpful for this year. I, I believe I can learn a lot here. So that's mm -hmm. all about me, thanks. Okay, thank you, Nika. So basically, uh, not only do we emphasize on theory, we are very much into uh, practicality. So with us, you will learn hands-on on, on uh, be involved in a lot of uh, live cases where possible. So yes, thank you, Nika, once again. Uh, now I'll pass my time on to Regine. Oh, okay, thank you, Lishan, and thank you to our students uh, for their introduction. So I, I guess uh, everybody now uh, have a better idea on the profile of uh, our students. Uh, and I would like to just give a very short uh, summary of what uh, Mark, uh, the program is about. It is a one-year full-time program, and for residents of Singapore, you can do it on a two-year part-time basis as well. But most of our students in the program are actually uh, doing on a full-time basis. It's only one year and all our programs starts in July and it will end in May the following year. So our one-year program is split into three trimester and in each trimester you take about four to five modules depending on the trimester. So that's just a very quick uh, summary of the program. So uh, I guess uh, we'll dive uh, deep in into you know asking some questions uh, to our student and uh, we'll have them share the uh, you know uh, you know they are sharing. Yeah. So maybe the first question I would like to direct to uh, Sura. Uh, yeah. You did your undergraduate degree in Australia and uh, how do you find the studying experience in Naya Business School and in Singapore? How does it compare to you know your experience in Australia? Uh, okay, so I think there are a lot of difference between these two experiences. So I think the first difference is uh, regarding the teaching mode. So in Australia, you in SW, so we have a lecture and a tutorial for each of the subjects uh, in, in a week. And here, so we have a three hour seminar for each of the subjects in a week. So I think a uh, seminar is better for you to have more connection, more interactions with your professors and also your classmates. So this is the first difference, which the which is a teaching mode, and the second difference is the um, the class. So as I just mentioned before, in USW we have uh, the lecture plus tutorial teaching mode. We don't have fixed class and we don't have fixed classmates uh, during my whole bachelor degree. But now in NBS, you, you are allocated to uh, either group B or group A, and you just for, stay in the same group for a whole year. So this group, um, so you have the fixed class and fixed classmates. And I think it's, it's much better that you can make more new friends and you can have more connections and interactions with your classmates. 
And um, the third difference is in, in terms of the intensity. So um, UNSW is also a trimester scheduled university and Master of Accountancy program is also trimester scheduled. So it makes these two university, university quite comparable in terms of the uh, intensity. So uh, in UNSW as a common student, I have I normally have three courses per trimester. But now um, here in NBS, we have five courses per trimester and um, we don't have the study week before the finals and it makes um, our study experience quite intensive and quite challenging. So I think these are the three differences I want to mention in between the uh, Australia study experiences and NBS study experiences. That's all, thank you. Okay, thanks, Suran. Yeah, I would like to elaborate. I, I think uh, the trimester basis in, in, in MBS uh, is a 13 weeks per trimester. So I think you have like 12 weeks of lesson and then 13 weeks is like the exams week. So I guess that's why you really need to constantly, uh, you know, keep up with all your work, with your lectures, your seminars, etc. And then you go on for your uh, exam. So there is a you need to put in a constant effort. And and I think Suran brought up a good point. Uh, all our you know uh, teaching here is a seminar style, so it's a very uh, interactive kind of learning style uh, that we have at the Nanyang Business School. So uh, it, it um, makes the I mean our students are able to you know. Um, what called get built on the communication skills because communication skills is really important whether in the workplace or in in while you're studying so it's a good chance to use this opportunity to improve on them uh, so this uh, interactive uh, style of learning uh, encourages our students to participate actively in the class uh, in terms of presentation discussion debates etc so I, I think uh, you know like Saran said these are uh, some of the differences uh, that she find uh, in the undergraduate program and in our master's program. Thank you, Suran. So, okay, the next question I have uh, is for Li Ke. Yeah, um, you are already you are doing very well in a PwC. You got into a big four, and then you already completed your CICPA, which uh, my alumni told me are the most difficult exams that they ever have to go through. So you already completed that, and you also done your ACCA. So why do you want to give up, you know, uh, a good career and, and, and then come here to take a year of a master's program again? Do you feel, uh, I mean, you mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, you is it like a very, um, a lot of overlap in terms of what you have learned uh, in all your different uh, education that is very focused in accounting? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I have to admit that uh, the working big four sometimes makes you feel really tired. And also, mm -hmm. that could be the very reason. Every people will feel tired. And also, my reason I want this, maybe I want some transfer of my career. I, I don't want just to focus on auditing or accounting, but maybe, you know, now that's people mostly talking about the data, the analysis. I want to make some transformation in my career. And I think the, some course in this, in this accountancy program is really helpful because it has some metadata program and also, in the course, we can learn about a lot about the analysis program. This is something that is definitely not touched in the bachelor degree, or sometimes maybe it will touch a bit, but at that time, without working experience, you will not have yeah. understanding about what you have actually learned or what you have to analyze. You will not know the impact it will have in the real business world. So this is why I want to pursue a master degree here, because it has some more advanced analytical skills that can help me a lot in my future career. And also I think the you know, to ACC or CSCP is sometimes just a way you should you should go through in your finance career. You you cannot avoid to achieve for this kind of certification is necessary for your career. I see. Yeah, Thank you so I much, uh, Tom. That yeah, you have heard him. Uh, it is uh to, to him he doesn't find a way to do a similar subject again but in 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 in, in it uh, he still find new things to learn so I really find it very admirable yeah for Lika to be spending his uh, one year with us thank you yeah I, my next question is actually for Dave um you already have an MBA you're also doing uh you know taxation in EY another big four I mean taxation uh, a lot of people say is one of the very highly sought after area in a big four 
And so what, make you, what makes you pursue a second master's and how do you envision uh, the accountancy master's is going to complement uh, your future career? How do, you, how do you hope to you know, enrich or add to your career in, after this program? Yeah, uh, thank you, Regina. Actually, that's a very uh, common question that normally everyone uh, was asking me when I embarked on this MSc accountancy course. Uh, I, I had this MBA finance, uh, but my uh, work experience was primarily in big force into tax and accounting. And uh, MBA finance was more into finance, uh, but less into accounting. So I wanted to, I mean, there were three primary reasons. One was I wanted to deep dive into accounting, and that's one of the reasons why I chose this course. Uh, Additionally, when I was uh, looking to pursue my CPA, I realized that uh, my I did my BBA finance and MBA finance. Uh, so I did not have the credits that was needed to sit for the CPA exam, that is the US CPA exam. So I needed to get those credits as well. So that was another factor which made me think about this course. And uh, another reason which I had mentioned earlier, which was one of the, the most important factors was the um, analytics part uh, i was look i was seeing that the industry was going through a lot of transformation during uh, when i was working at ey and also before that when i was working at deloitte that you know uh, there was a lot of data analytics that was being employed in in taxation and now i mean if you look uh, there is a new field which has emerged which is known as tax analytics and in fact in audit also we have audit analytics so uh, because of these uh, three reasons, I, I mean, especially the data analytics part, I thought that I will, I was actually looking for the course modules and, you know, I, I went through three, four colleges, but I saw that NTU had this data analytics in their uh, module, I mean, in the MSc accountancy modules. So yeah, that it was primarily because of these three reasons and the analytics part, I chose uh, to pursue another MSc course after an MBA and working for eight yeah. years. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dave, for uh, for sharing. So yeah, I, I, I think uh, indeed a lot of people do an MSc first and then MBA, but you already have an MBA, which a lot of people is like, well, you already have an MBA, it's like done, but you actually took an extra step to do a specialized master's I, in accounting because you find that it's going to complement your uh, finance background and it's going to you know help you to be where you want uh, you know to attain your uh, you know certified uh, public accountant kind of a qualification yeah so so definitely uh, our program allows uh, some of the our students who are interested to get like uh, the Singapore chartered accountant uh, accountant qualifications or ACCA CPA Australia we do offer exemptions to some of uh, some of these uh, um, professional bodies so um, so you, there are some papers that you get exempted uh, as a graduate of the NTU uh, this uh, master's of science accountancy program yeah, thank you, uh, Dave, for sharing. So, but finally, uh, not the last, uh, but William. So, uh, you, you, again, you are one of uh, our students who have a lot of work experience already. And how uh, was it? How has it been? You know, adjusting uh, back to being a student again. Was it a steep learning curve? Uh, because uh, your background is uh, not so much in in this area. How how was it like? Uh, thank you, Regine. I think so far so good. Uh, it was not as difficult as I mentioned, you know, even though my first degree was in business and accountancy is a lot more specialized in business. Uh, but it's been very good so far because, you know, um, the lecturers are all very helpful and approachable. And I think uh, the course focused a lot on uh, group work in addition to lectures. Uh, you know, my classmates are all, uh, the quality is very high, you know, and uh, the mix of students is very diversified. So I learned a lot from them as well, uh, from the daily interaction. Um, trimester one flew by so quickly, you know, and we have already started trimester two. Um, so, you know, as a working adult coming back into, uh, you know, studying again, I'm looking forward to what trimester two has to offer and to enjoy student life while it lasts before going back to the working world. Okay, because uh, so where, uh, what kind of a role do you hope to get into after completing uh, this uh, program? I mean, have you thought about uh, which area you would like to go into? Yeah, I think uh, at the moment I'm keeping my options open. I'm exploring different opportunities. I think having an accountancy master's is uh, very versatile. Uh, you know, for example, in banking, I was doing uh, relationship management uh, in corporate banking. Uh, you know, I can also move laterally into uh, internal audit uh, in banks. Mm -hmm. I can also move into the uh, onto my client side. 
either as uh, you know in the finance department of uh, you know of, uh, of my client or maybe in the treasury department i think you know with uh, an accountancy you know graduate qualification is highly sought after you know you won't there won't be a shortage of opportunities so you know um i'm keeping my options open and see what uh, you know the, the world has to offer and i think you know currently uh, with covid it's a lot it's a little bit challenging but i think uh by the time you graduate in June next year, uh, the situation would have uh, been a lot better. Yeah, thank you, William. I, I think you're indeed very right. Uh, I think uh, having an accounting degree is actually very versatile. Like I said, uh, a lot of people have the misconception that as an accounting grad, you can only do auditing. <laughs> uh and an accountant but uh you, there's a lot of other areas that you know one can you know specialize into like for example dip you can be in taxation uh you can be in finance you can actually start your own company it's, it's actually quite versatile you can be in consulting etc yeah so uh, Lishan will be helping uh with uh, asking the other questions so Lishan over to you <laughs> yeah okay thank you Regine so uh, William, so how do you think that this uh, MSc accountancy, how will it be able to prepare you for your future career path? Yeah, thank you, Lishan. So having been in banking for over 10 years, you know, I'm looking to upskill myself, uh, looking to acquire complementary skill sets that will give me the competitive edge in my next career move. Uh, after looking around and studying what's on offer, you know, uh, amongst the universities in Singapore, uh, I decided to do the MSc accountancy at MBS. Uh, it was a natural choice for me, you know, for the reasons I mentioned before, you know, uh, number one, the brand name, number two, uh, and very important to me is the alumni network, the MBS alumni network, as well as the uh, program structure is very rigorous and, uh, you know, very enriching. I believe all these factors combined will give me the necessary platform to uh, move ahead in my next career. Okay, thank you, William. Yes. So, Regine, would you like to... Sure, okay. So uh, my next question is uh, for Suran. So um, with your, you know, undergrad in accounting and marketing as a double major, so, um, and then now with a master's in accountancy, what kind of roles and industry do you wish to, you know, get into upon completing this degree? Uh, are you planning, do you think you want to work in Singapore or, you know, go to Australia to work or where? <laughs> Um, I think, uh, so I think yeah. I probably go back to China to uh, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, I, I think I probably just go back to China to work and uh, I uh, my future career plan is that I can uh, I, I wish that I can start as a finance and accounting management trainee in the one of the fortune 500 companies and I probably just stay in the same company and get promoted to higher financial management positions. And the industries of the companies can be uh, like the FMCG or the internet industry or just the traditional industries like the energy or the manufacturing. So mm -hmm. uh, later on, I wish that I can finish my ACC and the ICP certificate in order to accelerate my career path. And that's my answer. Thank you. Okay, that's great. I guess you can uh, get tips from uh, Li Ke how to ace the CICPA and all the ACCA. He can he can probably give you some tips. Yeah, and also Siran, I just wanted to ask you, how do you find the careers uh, office in Singapore? Uh, I, I mean, MBS, are they help uh, helping you? Uh, you are with a lot of workshops and tips and all that to to get into the and counseling in terms of uh, your career plans. Uh, how do they uh, do? You think they're helpful? Yeah, I think the career offers are quite helpful. So I remember that they ha they have held a lot of workshops like to teach you how to manage your English resume, the Chinese resume, the cover letter, or uh, yeah, this, they have organized a lot of workshops. And later on, they have uh, held a lot of like um, uh, group interview sessions. I have participated in one of them. And so they are like, five or six students in a group to have a mock, inter mock uh, group interview. So, and also you can have an appointment with one of the uh, teachers to deal with your resume or other kind of things related to the career. So, and also in our career feeds, um, there are a lot of job opportunities updated every day. So if you want to find a job or an internship, you can just have a look on the career feed. So yeah, and I think that's really helpful for my career, my future career. 
Okay, thanks, Zuran. Yeah, uh, yeah, indeed, uh, a lot of our students always say that the careers office has a lot of workshops that actually they sometimes don't have enough time to attend all of them. So uh, I think when uh, Zuran mentioned career feed, it's actually a proprietary job portal uh, uh, that is uh, that is used by Nanyang Business School. So our career uh, colleagues, uh, they post a lot of internship and job opportunities uh, on this platform where our students can, you know, just go and, you know, apply uh, to, to, to all this. And I, I think if they manage to secure an interview, you can always approach uh, them for help uh, in terms of tips for the interview, etc. So, I mean, at the careers office, uh, they try their best to give you the tools, the opportunity, but whether you can get that job or the internship is ultimately still in the hands of our students because uh, we can't go uh, to the interview with them. So a lot of time is also, um, we help them uh, with, to the best that we can, and then they are the one clinching it. And I think um, uh, I think a Prof Chu shared with me that in the recent uh, Big Four recruitment, I think four of uh, the students in the current cohort, they were already offered employment with the Big Four uh, in Singapore uh, in this uh, first round. So I thought it was uh, really good. You know, it's only one trimester into the program, and already, you know, some of the classmates have already gotten offer. So hopefully more to come. Yeah. <laughs> so my next question is for uh, Deb. How is it? Um, how was your experience like? You know, uh, working with your classmates, uh, and and how are you adapting to studying and living uh, in Singapore? Thank you, Regine. Uh, it's actually we just got started with the physical classes. The whole first trimester was uh, virtual. Uh, uh, so this physical classes led to the much awaited face-to-face -face interaction with my fellow classmates. Uh, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying this experience of uh, learning something new almost on a daily basis because uh, we have classmates from many countries, but majority of them are from China. And uh, I'm learning about their culture. Uh, and you know, it's, it's something very new for me. I have never been exposed to the Chinese culture uh, much. Uh, I was mostly working for US clients. so. Uh, so yeah, that's a good learning experience for me. Uh, it also helps us understand, adapt, and be considerate about, uh, you know, and broaden our outlook by constantly learning for, from them. Uh, or, you know, uh, when, when I interact with my classmates, most of them have a very strong accounting background. And uh, it's it's very helpful for me because I, my, my one of the main reasons of coming to this course was to, you know, gain in-depth knowledge into accounting. So we have a very, we have a great mix of people, you know, people constantly learning from each other. Mm -hmm. Finally, uh, I consider myself very fortunate to, you know, get this opportunity uh, to study over here in Singapore, which is, you know, one of the financial hubs uh, in Southeast Asia. So yeah, it's, it's a great experience uh, till now. Okay, that's great. I'm glad that you're adapting uh, to, to, to studying and living in Singapore. And I, I guess uh, you're right, uh, the majority of our students in the program uh, comes from China. Um, but uh, like you said, uh, there's, uh, there's also variety in their background as well. Some of them have some work experience, some of them uh, are fresh graduates, uh, because this the Masters of Science program is usually a pre-experience program. So most of the students in the program are definitely uh, fresh grads, and uh, but they all come from a different background. Like Siran actually, got, you know, hails from Australia, so a, a, a different mix. Yeah. And uh, I, so uh, my last part. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Rajin. I also wanted to mention one more thing, like uh, you know, over here in uh, Singapore. Uh, I've after coming over here, I've seen one thing that uh, you know uh, people. Uh, I think there is a trend that people focus a lot on the fitness and other things. So I think at NTU also we have this culture. Uh, anyone who is coming new at NTU, they will find that students uh, get to uh, you know uh, they can use many of the facilities like the gym, the swimming pool, and all of that. So. You know, being a fitness enthusiast, I think in Singapore also outside you see many fitness, outdoor fitness zones, which is uh, good for, you know, for the citizens to stay fit. So I think that's that's a good shift which I've seen after coming over here and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, so, okay. yeah. Okay, that's really good. 
Thank you so much, uh, Deb. You, you know, I have my own theory why Singaporeans are getting more into fitness because we are foodies. We love to eat. <laughs> so we need to exercise in order to continue eating all the different things that we offer. So that's my own personal theory. <laughs> yeah. And okay, so I think Deb, you mentioned that, you know, you, you guys just started your, your uh, trimester too, where you have in-person classes because, because of the pandemic, our first trimester was actually having all online classes uh, because of the safety issue, uh, the well-being of our students and our community. So uh, it's only in trimesters too, where everybody is able to come uh, to Singapore. So I want to ask uh, Li Ke, how was, uh, you, you know, your experience of studying online and then coming to Singapore and maybe serving the stay home notice. How was the whole thing? I mean, do you feel that, uh, you know, the, the school give you enough support in, in these areas? Yeah. I think it's at least it's better than I expected because the pandemic is still all around the global. A lot of uh, new cases and, uh, you know, many universities cannot start their course. I think and uh, my experience is really good because online, online class, uh, it's definitely a different experience from face to face, but still online class gives you some chance to reflect yourself and also have some easy connect with your professor and also a new experience of connect with your classmates, the professor. I think that's definitely good because trimester one at least give me some good performance and I think I had already learned a lot in the trimester one and also I think the procedure for me to enter from China to Singapore with the stay home notice and also later to transfer from the stay home notice to my own dormitory, I think this experience is quite good. I didn't face many difficulties and I think it's tr transfer fluently. I think I enjoy this process. Yes, that's it, I think. Okay, that's good. I'm, I'm, I'm sure happy to hear that everything uh, works out well for everybody and we are all very uh, safe uh, or in class and enjoying your in-class experience. So uh, I think what I'll do now is uh, we will go to the question and answer uh, segment uh, for today's uh, sharing. So I will read out the questions and uh, I will uh, direct the question to, to some of you or, or Li Shan to help me to answer depending on the questions. So just let me go to the questions. Okay, um, so we have quite a fair bit of questions. Okay, so there is a question. Um, uh, can I apply without the GRE or a GMAT score? Um, so the GRE or GMAT is really a compulsory part of our application. So uh, it is a required uh, one uh, for applicants. So we don't have conditional offer uh, for those without GMAT score. Yeah, another question is uh, from Sunyu. Um, I'm 52 years old. I graduated from NTU with Bachelor's of Accountancy in 1991. I'm doing my business for the last 30 years and I want to change. I want to do a master's program. Uh, do I need to remember the content I studied during my undergraduate days? Um, maybe Li Ke or Siren can help to answer since you are uh, accounting undergrad. Do you think that you need to uh, need to have some accounting knowledge from your undergrad days to do the program? Well, I, I think it's no need actually because accounting is something that are still in progress every day, every year. You know, we have lots of new revenue, new list standards. This all change. You just need to con com come up with the new standards. Maybe just some basic knowledge of accounting as definitely you can remember, but you do not need to reflect back all what you have learned in the 1990s, I think. <laughs> okay, how about Siren, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, I think as long as you do a accounting degree, you, you should like memorize some of the concepts in your mind. So when you have the courses, and I think the, uh, the courses can teach you the concepts very in detail and you can I, I believe that you can recall most of things yeah so uh, just relax don't worry <laughs> yeah so so I think because this program is also uh, suitable for uh, uh, candidates who have no accounting background and who wants to you know go into the accounting line so I think uh, it definitely you do not need to remember 
member, I, I guess in some ways, because you, you know, it's also it's okay for people with no background. So I think that's fine. Okay, so ne next question is from Ruo Tie. Could you please elaborate more on the part-time two-year program? How does it work? Uh, do students need to uh, attend classes in person or online? And when are these uh, classes scheduled? So uh, I think I'll answer this question because none of them are part-time students. So actually how it works is that um, uh, there are classes uh, in, even in, in the current cohort that they are held on a weekdays evening or on Saturdays. So for evening classes and Saturdays classes, uh, our part-time students can attend those. Uh, yeah, so because our program is an in-person class, it's not meant to be uh, a distant learning or online classes. It was only held online because of the pandemic. So even for part-time uh, schedule, all our students are expected to attend classes online. So I, I don't have the class schedule uh, for you because it changes every year, uh, Yeah, depending on the faculty schedule teaching in the program. So it's no fixed day uh, that you have classes. Yeah, but at, on a part-time basis, you actually do have the workload of a full-time student. So if they take four modules that trimester, you only need to take two, uh, which is why you also double the time to complete the program. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, next question is uh, Wang Jie. I wonder whether each course are delivered only in seminar or lecture. Uh, what is the class size? Uh, William, would you like to help us with that answer? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I think for this uh, intake, uh, there are two groups. Uh, each group is about 44 uh, students strong. Um, so in addition to, you know, uh, lectures delivered by the lecturers, uh, you know, a huge percentage of the uh, curriculum is actually, uh, you know, group work where you break into uh, groups of four or five to do uh, case studies and then you make a presentation. Uh, other than that, you know, you have your uh, midterm quiz, your little quiz here and there, and then the final exam at the end of the trimester. Yeah, so I, I guess it's a lot more seminar style and a lot of self-learning discussion because I think in the master's program, we don't learn just from the uh, professor itself. Uh, we also emphasize on peer-to-peer -peer learning as well. Uh, so which is why our, uh, you know, cohorts are made of different people with different backgrounds so that when you work in groups together, you're exposed to different strengths, to different culture, etc. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, so this question is from Ruo Tian. Uh, it seems like most of the panelists have an accounting background or having professional suits in, or working in big four. What is the rough percentage of students who does not have accounting related background? And if I don't have such a background, would I have difficulty catching up the course? Uh, I think maybe this one, William, again, <laughs> I need you to answer because, okay, although you're a business, uh, your undergrad is a business related, but not so focused in accountancy, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, um, so far so good. Uh, it wasn't a huge or steep learning curve. I think, uh, you know, you don't really need to have, uh, uh, in fact, you don't really need to have, uh, you know, basic accounting knowledge to begin with because uh, the, the, the seminars, lectures are very progressive in nature. Uh, you know, uh, the lecturers are very clear and uh, concise in their delivery. Uh, and outside of that, you know, when you go into your uh, group discussions and stuff like that, you know, uh, most of the classmates, you know, they have accounting background and stuff like that. So you also learn from them. Uh, and through all this interaction, you pick up knowledge and there to complement what the lecturer uh, teaches. So I think uh, if you don't have an accountancy background, uh, you don't have to worry. Um, you know, this course, to begin with, this course is targeted to uh, attract those people without accountancy uh, background. Yeah, thank you, William. I think you put it across uh, very well. I don't even have to <laughs> say anything else. Yes. Yeah, so definitely, uh, yes, it does, uh, which is why our, our curriculum is a fixed curriculum. So uh, you cannot, like, you know, shuffle that you want to do this module in this trimester or something because, like uh, William mentioned, it's progressive. So some of the modules in the later trimester are actually built on the foundations that you have learned in the earlier trimester. So it's a build-up 
So yeah, so you can you know switch your classes around and, and all that. And I think Rojun, you also have a few other questions like uh, how does the program helps to get the Singapore Chartered Accountant certificate and whether the part-time student will be studying together with the full-time student. So I'll answer this question. So the full-time student and the part-time students, uh, yes, they will study together. So as a part-time student, it means that you actually study with two cohorts because you get two years to complete the program. So you will spend across uh, two full-time cohorts that you study with. And how does it help to get the Singapore Chartered Accountant program? So the Singapore CA uh, has the foundation level exams followed by the professional exams. And then you need to have a uh, work experience uh, with, uh, with uh, what they call a training um, those uh, meant uh, organization that they um, that they allow this uh, work experience to be counted towards the Singapore CA. Uh, yeah, so so as a graduate from this program, you actually get to skip the entire uh, foundation uh, uh, level exams, which consists of quite a few papers, should be eight to nine papers, and you go straight into the professional level exam. So that in that way is an accelerated path. You you skip all your foundation level papers. Yeah. So another question from Na Ping, Nam Ping. Okay, so uh, she asked this question, can long-term pass holder apply for full-time or the part-time course and what is the tuition fee in total? Uh, Li Shan, would you like to answer this, uh, help with this? Uh, sorry, Regine, could you repeat again, sorry? Uh, yeah, no worries. Uh, uh, she asked uh, whether a long-time pass holder, long-term pass holder, uh, can she apply for the full-time and the part-time program and uh, the cost fee uh, for the program? Oh yes, uh, definitely. Uh, a long-term pass holder, we do accept you as both full-time and part-time, and the cost fee is around sixty-two thousand, uh, including GST. Uh, sorry, it's a uh, forty-five thousand. Oh, sorry, 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 forty-five thousand. Sorry. Uh, it's, yeah, it's the same. Uh, the tuition fee is yeah. the same whether you're full-time or part-time student. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No worries. Uh, okay. The next question is um, okay. Most school uh in other continents offer GMAT or GRE waivers for applicants with five years of postgraduate experience. Is this the same for NTU? Uh, actually, for some of our, uh, actually for, for this program, if you have uh, five years of uh, work experience in a related uh, in accounting or finance area in a, in a large organization, uh, we will consider this a waiver on a case by case basis. So it's not an automatic waiver. Uh, you will have to you know put in your application and then we can consider on a case by case basis. Yeah. Um, so okay. Uh, Stephanie asked, is there a lot of programming based uh, in the course? Uh, you know, uh, Deep, uh, Deep, would you like to help with this question? Yeah, uh, sure. So I think uh, uh, I went through the module. There is uh, there is not much of programming, but basically we will get to know how we can use analytics for uh, you know accounting or taxation. So you don't need a lot of programming knowledge for that, but you can definitely learn programming on your own if you have more interest in that. But in this course, it is basically uh, analytics uh, module is there to you know, uh, get you more familiar with the uh, usage of analytics in the field of accounting. Uh, but, you know, uh, in order to learn programming, you will have, you can, you know, do it on your own. So, like, I am trying to, uh, you know, learn few uh, uh, programming code from LinkedIn and other, which the college gives you the opportunity. So, if uh, through NTU, you can uh, directly use LinkedIn learning for learning all these uh, programming languages. But yeah, course module does not cover uh, programming, coding and all such uh, things. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because uh, our program, uh, although we have uh, analytics into the program, it is not meant for you to be the person using programming to come up with all these insights. It's, we are teaching you to use uh, analytics to, to um, to I mean uh, understand the insight that uh, these uh, programmers maybe churn out for you, yeah. So it's not meant uh, to teach you to use programming to do that. So so there's a difference uh, in in the program. So there are other programs out there that you really need to learn programming. So you are the one 
you know, coming up with the programming to, so, to you know, you know, combine data and all that. So our one is a little right. bit different. Yeah. Rajin, I th I would like to mention one more point over yes, here. Sure. Is, uh, if we in, like if if they include programming, then the issue is uh, the call the course also gives you exemptions for these professional exams like the chartered accountancy Singapore chartered accountancy or CPA Australia. Mm -hmm. So including mm -hmm. programming uh, will make it difficult for them to uh, get these exemptions because then they will have to uh, you know leave few of the modules which are needed for these uh, exemptions. So yeah, it makes sense uh, to just include the analytics for familiarity. Exactly. So, so it really depends on um, on what you want. So, uh, we we can't have everything. If we want to include, then we have to make a, the program longer than one year. It's not possible yeah. to cram everything into one year. Yeah. So the next question is for uh, Deb uh, again. So he said that um, he wished to engage in taxation and and he wanted to ask you if you could list some data analytics skills that are used in Big Four and how this program can help you in your taxation work would you be able to answer that or yeah uh, so uh, frankly i have uh, my prior experience is mostly into tax compliance and planning uh, but yeah my main intention of getting into this course is to get to know how we can use analytics for tax and uh, so you know i am also trying to uh, you know we have analytics in the upcoming module so I, i'm also trying to understand how we can use analytics in tax but there is a lot of predictive analytics which is being used by the big force into tax so what they are doing is uh, most of the financial data of the clients are there in these uh, sap and other uh, softwares and basically they are using these uh, data to you know predict what will be the tax in the future years so that they can do they can do better tra tax planning so basically it's all about planning tax for the future uh, and you know uh, by learning from past data so they use the past data they feed it into the system and then you know they they use it for a better tax planning so i'm also still in that process and you know i'm still in that process of learning so maybe i, I cannot give you a very good explanation but this is a this is a summary of what i can tell you and, and, and I think I would like to add that analytics in accounting is still evolving. There's, uh, there are also a lot of changes. So whatever you learn today, uh, you know, um, it, it could also uh, evolve into something a little bit different after that. So which is why we, we all need to constantly update our skills, you know, plug the skill, uh, skill gaps and all that. So having this master's program doesn't mean that you don't need to learn anymore. We constantly still need to update our skills accordingly. Yeah. So I think this one question is a uh, uh, Does NTU have a target school list by recruiting students? Um, so actually, we, we don't have a target school list, like as in uh, we only recruit from certain university. So what we do is that uh, we will uh, assess each application as a whole. So we do not just look at your GMAT score or the university that you are, that you are from. So we assess you on your uh, academic, uh, of course, uh, your non-academic achievements. We also take a look at that as well. So yeah, so I, I think, um, so, so we really look at it as a whole. So don't worry if you didn't come from a, you know, you're, you, in your opinion, a very good school, but if you have great work experience, um, you have a great GMAT score, etc. you know, we will definitely still, you know, shortlist you for admission interview. And then uh, the admission interview is where, you know, you are able to, you know, showcase uh, what you have to offer to, to the Nair Business School, to the program, and of course, if they're the right program for you. Yeah. So I think that's all about the, the questions that I have got. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I saw one more question. Mm. The students of this program have the opportunity to work in financial institutions like HSBC, Goldman Sachs. Um, I think uh, definitely they are. So depending on what kind of roles you want to do in these organizations, because we have students, we have alumni who are working in like, you know, Goldman Sachs, uh, who are working in banks. We have students working in FMCG as a management trainee. So they really get into all kinds of roles uh, upon graduation. So it's not just uh, too big for, 
Yeah. Okay, so I, I think that's all. Perhaps uh, any of our uh, students here would like to give the last word of advice to our attendees here tonight. Maybe Siran, would you like to go first? Uh, a last word of advice would like to, you know, uh, you know, apply to our program to the school. What would you give them? <laughs> so, uh, what I want to say is just to believe yourself. I know, like during the whole application process, you will get very um, uh, very up upset and you will worry about your application results. But uh, personally thinking, so for myself, I I don't um uh, I'm not interested on other person's results. I only focus on my own things. So um like prepare your uh Kira talents. I don't know whether you have or not. Prepare for your interview. Um uh, and then prepare for everything you need to go through. So just trust yourself and uh, do not get too uh, upset. And that's my advice. Okay, thank you, Suran. Yes, just be focused and uh, work on the goal, the end in mind. Yes, thank you, Suran. That's a very good advice. How about Lika? Do you have any advice uh, for our for our students uh, here? I mean, attendees, yeah, uh, listening. I think today? like just uh, said, maybe it will be a long journey and also like you have to prepare GMAT and other uh, relevant documents. You know, last year when I applied, I was one time at the same time uh, over time in the big four and prepare for my CSCP exam. I think the, the process may be tough, but finally when you got the result you want, it will be, you will be feel very confident. Like William said, back to school, enjoy your school life. And, that's finally you got something you want, you will feel good. So that you just don't give up and try to prepare for the best and you will finally got the results. Okay, thank you. Yes, so thank you so much. Yes, I think yes, for those who have worked a while going back to school, it seems a very like a very refreshing feeling. No more pressures or work, but just focus on getting uh, your assignments done and passing your exams. <laughs> very different goals. Okay, how about William? Is there any parting advice that you would like to give uh, to the candidates listening in? Uh, yeah, sure. I think, uh, you know, importantly is uh, to know what you want, what you want to achieve and go for it, you know. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, accountancy degree is a very versatile degree. And just to add on to uh, what Regine said uh, to the last question, uh, at banks and FIs, uh, you know, um, they, they either hire, they look at, you know, they look, they look to hire people from either business finance or accountancy degree. You know, in fact, uh, in the banks that I work for, uh, candidates with accountancy degrees are very highly sought after. So it's a very useful degree to have if you want to go into the banking world as well. Um, you know, and personally for me, you know, um, the program experience so far is very rigorous, but very fulfilling and enriching at the same time. Um, and before I, you know, sign up for the program, I spoke to a lot of my ex-colleagues and even my very good friends who were all uh, ex, uh, you know, graduates of this program and they gave me very good, uh, you know, feedback and uh, encouragement to sign up for this program. So, so far I really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, complete the rest of the program. Yeah, thank you, uh, William. We we welcome you to be a uh, part of the alumni again. <laughs> so uh, you. you're already alumni of NTU, but I'm going to be welcome you to soon to be the alumni of Nayam Business School as well. Thank you so much for this uh, vote of confidence uh, in coming to us uh, for your second master's. That's a very high praise instead. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah. And okay, finally, uh, Deep, uh, Deep uh, would you have any uh, advice uh, before we end off uh, tonight's uh, session? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I think I agree with uh, William and then everyone else. Uh, it's basically, uh, first of all, we need to know what we want out of the program. That's the main uh, point. If you don't know what you want, then it's difficult to, you know, when you're applying your essay and all of that that you're writing, that's very important. The essay part, the, the uh, college focuses a lot on the essay. And the GMAT, the academic, that definitely matters a lot, but your intention of getting into the program uh, should be, uh, you know, very clear. So that's one thing. And then uh, you should, what Siran mentioned just now, that we need to focus on what we, you know, not uh, not divert our focus on other things, but, you know, when we are applying for the course, just focus on that and just be positive about it. And I think things should, you know, turn out good for you. So. You know, just go for it with a positive mindset. That's all my advice would be. 
Thank you so much for, for all your advice. Uh, we really appreciate all your, uh, everyone, uh, you know, uh, to take, uh, you know, one hour off this evening to spend time with us and also to our students to spare one hour amidst your revision, studying, homework, uh, to, to share your experience and insights. I, I think uh, the attendees uh, really appreciate that. And I myself uh, learned a lot uh, from your sharing as well. Thank you so much uh, for all the heartfelt sharing. Yeah, so I think uh, that's all for today. So, um, so in case anybody would like to, you know, be in touch with me, uh, this is my contact details. Uh, you can email me uh, at me from WeChat uh, or if you are uh, based in uh, China. Yeah. So thank you so much. That's all for today. Thank you so much. Good night. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.